Hello and welcome to the channel. In this video we'll see how to create the Pong game in Excel using VBA macros. And this is a quite old classic arcade game. It was probably one of the first computer games with movement. So we'll see how to move the ball, how to move the, the computer, we're going to play against the computer, and also how to move our player with the mouse, with the keyboard and the mouse. So let's start from scratch. We're going to use the range from B2 to I14. Let's put the line here as the net, as this is a table tennis or tennis game. Then we will add rectangular shapes for the paddles and an oval shape for the ball. And we're going to rename each of these. The ball will be ball player 1 and player 2. Now let's move to the Visual Basic Editor. The first macro is start game. We're going to initialize some variables here. So let's set the player 1 as sheet shapes player 1. We set the player 2 and also the ball. So we are defining the object variables here. Now let's def define also the direction of the ball when we start with ball call inc and ball row increment. And we're going to declare all these variables at module level because we will use them in different macros. When we start, we will bind the keys. So let's have this other macro here and we're gonna capture the key with application on key up and we will call the move up macro and then the same for the down key we will call the move down macro now i'm gonna have another variable for the range the table or, or whatever we can call it and this will be b2 through i14 and of course, we declare that also up here. As a, this one is a range object. Now we can call move up. And if player one dot top, the top of the player, is greater than our range dot top plus four, because we're going to move four points each time, then we can move player one with the up arrow key top equals player one top minus four we're moving up and same thing for moving down so i'm gonna copy paste this i'm gonna rename this moving down now now if the player one the top plus the player one dot height is lower than the range dot top plus range dot height so that's the same as if we would say in range dot bottom, but we do not have the bottom uh, property. So we have to sum the top plus the height. And then minus four, we're gonna move the top of the player plus four. So we're gonna move down. So this is for, for moving the player with the keyboard. Now, when we, stop the game, finish the game or whatever, we're going to unbind the keys so that we can use again those in the keyboard. So unbind keys. To unbind keys, we just need to remove this. So let's see if we can move the player now. Let me add here a couple of buttons to start the game. Nothing's going to really happen yet when we start the game. But this button, the first one, we'll call a start game game and then when we stop the game let me come back here sub stop game one of the things we will do is to unbind the keys uh, we will see later what else we do here but then we're gonna have here a button if necessary to stop the game otherwise the game will probably stop when we lose or win or and so on so stop game so now if i click start the keys are bound so and you see i can move my player with the arrow keys up and down arrow keys so that works let's see if it goes yeah it just goes till the end of the range or, or the table 
Now, if I stop, I cannot move anymore if they are unbound. OK, now the next thing we're going to do here, I'm going to rename this module. This is the main module where we're going to be working. We have most of the code. But then we're going to have additional modules. I will not add it. I will import a timer module because we're going to because we're going to use the set timer function from the Windows API. I have explained that in various other videos. I'm going to leave the link up here, for example, in the snake game or in the Tron game uh, is is the same thing. So I have here the the module. It's added. It looks like this. Um, we're going to have instead of 100 milliseconds, we will have maybe 50. This is going to call this one and move. Let's rename it to move ball. This is going to call move ball. And ultimately, when we will finish the game, we will call stop timer to stop the, the timer. And this is using the set timer function. I, I have explained that in, in various other videos. So now move ball. Let's go back to the main module. We're going to add down here, move ball. And we're going to be calling this procedure every 50 milliseconds to move the ball. Not only the ball, we will also add here the code to move player one when we move it with the mouse and player two, the computer. OK, so we're going to have here two events, first of all. And the first thing we're going to check here is the top and bottom borders. So we are moving the ball here. So we're going to check if the ball.top is less than the rng.top, the range.top. So this is when it hits the upper bound, the top border. Or when it hits the lower down, that is ball.top plus ball.high is higher, greater than the range.top plus range.height. Then, in that case, we're going to change the, the vertical direction of the ball. And we do that with ball row increment. This is this variable that we declare up here. One for the column, one for the row. Here, we're going to move, change the row increment. It's going to be minus whatever it is, minus row increment. So it's going to move in the opposite direction. We end the if here. Now we're going to check the left and right borders. And this is when the game ends. So ends the game. When the ball reaches either the left or the right border, it means either we win or we lose. So if ball.left is less than range.left, then it's on our left, then you lose and game over. And here we can call a stop game, for example, and exit this up. Or actually, we stopped game before we show the box. That's important, because a stop game will call the stop timer. So timer stops. First of all, we stop the timer. Now, else if the ball dot right, we don't have a right property. So that's the ball left plus ball width is greater than the range left plus range width, then again, we stop the game here in both cases. But here, you win. And we exit this sub because this sub continues. Now, we continue checking when the ball hits player one or player two. And this is a little more um, complicated, not, not really complicated, but a little longer. We're going to check several things here. So if the ball is moving to the left, so that, that is if the ball column increment is minus one and the ball dot left is less than the player one dot left plus player one dot width. So that's the right side of the player. And let's continue in the next line. The ball dot top is less than the player one top plus player one height. And the ball dot top is greater than the player one dot top 
and there's one more condition so let me put it here now the ball should not be because it can be behind us it would meet this criteria so we need to say also ball dot left is greater than the player one dot left then and there are a lot of conditions here together right it's kind of confusing uh, but hopefully you follow what I can do is I can put it in separate uh, lines so you see and actually this one let me put this one up so maybe makes a little of more sense to you so we are checking here the left um, so we are checking here if the ball is on the left or the right side of the player and here is if it is uh, within the same height and in that case we're gonna set the column increment to plus one it was minus one it was going in the left direction now we, we're gonna of course we're gonna hit the ball it's gonna move in the opposite direction and now we do the same with the player two which is the computer so if it hits the computer it's gonna but now it's moving in to the right so plus one the column increment is plus one and if ball dot left plus ball dot width is greater than player two dot left and also the ball dot left is less than the player two dot left plus player two dot width and the ball dot top is less than the player two by the way i miss here that was player two we are talking about player two here player two dot top plus player two dot height and the ball dot top plus the ball dot height is greater than the player to the top now we're gonna move the column increment or we're gonna change it to minus one and if so all this bunch of code is gonna check if the ball hits either player one or player two or player two and it's gonna change the direction the horizontal direction of the ball Okay, now finally we're gonna move the ball. So the ball dot left equals ball dot left plus the ball column increment, and this is gonna be plus one. But I already know it's gonna be too little because we're moving four points. Our player, we're gonna move the computer four or maybe just two points so the ball is going to be too slow in comparison so let's multiply by two and the ball dot top is also going to move with the ball raw increment times two so this means it will it will move plus two or or minus two and this is a simplification of the original game because here the ball is always going to take the same tragic trajectory so to speak in the original game it could take different angles depending on how you hit the ball we're gonna make this simplification for now maybe later we will do uh, we will do more and then finally the last thing we're gonna do in this macro is we're gonna call move player 2 which is the computer so I have saved the file punk here and we're gonna ha have here the move player two but before we move player two let's see how it works we're gonna have here at the beginning now a start timer and this is calling the start timer in this other module right the start timer which is using the set timer function from the windows api in the user 32 library and then we we will stop the timer as well so let me go back and here in the stop game we're gonna stop the timer okay so let's see now how this works for now so the ball is moving i can move my player computer is not moving yet so 
if it doesn't hit the ball, it's gonna it's gonna reach the right border of the of the range, and then you win. And I'm gonna pause here, so in the next video we will see how to move the computer, and we will add a routine to capture mouse movements to move the player with the mouse cursor and make some final game amendments. Thanks for watching.